please keep them. Do we know if this is for fundraising or not? For the Father's Day breakfast, it's not? Okay. So, okay, so everyone's welcome. It's not a fundraising. You guys are welcome to have a breakfast with your uh, with your dad or with the, uh, the father in the, uh, the family. Just bring them over here uh, next Sabbath. Um, next week, or no, beginning actually, beginning Monday, June 5th to June 14th, Pastor Ed will be, uh, he will actually not going to be here, he'll be in um, California. We have to congratulate him, he's graduating for his, I think for his, I think it's his doctorate, so he will be um, going to California on that, uh, that time, it's going to be June 5th to June 14th, so any concerns? that you guys have in church, you can bring it to our um, other um, church elders. So, because he's not going to be here in that time. Again, camp meeting, it will be on the next two weeks from June 15 to June 24. And also our church will be closed. We're not going to be here. So if you have any visitors, tell them, okay, please direct them to the camp meeting, which is in um, Auburn. Okay. So if there's any more announcements, do we have the uh, praise team um, ready? I'd like to invite you guys up here. Good morning, everyone. Sing with us as we sing praises to God. Our first song is found in hymn number 100, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Toussaint, la voiture qui s'allume, que tu achètes. certainly rejoice that we who worship a God who is so much in love with us. Father, once again today, we ask that we will have a glimpse of your beautiful character and that we will not just heed your, hear your word, but become reflectors of your word. Thank you for bringing us all here today. Help us to tune out every other distractions so that our hearts will only be in tune to you. So we can hear you clearly and we can get the message right down into our heart. Thank you for that. Thank you for your presence here. In Jesus' name. Amen. I would like to call our kids. Um, it's children's story. So go get your basket. Um, James will be telling you a story today. I'm going to tell a story today. 
Now, before I tell the story, I need to know who knows what a missionary is. What's a missionary, bro? <laughs> They go out and they uh, do ministries, they teach others about God, and they help others, and we know that there are people in our church that have gone on mission trips. Now, this story today is about a missionary. He's a pastor. Uh, his name is Pastor Hallowell, but he is more than just a pastor that uh, preaches because he owns a boat. Why would a pastor own a boat? He lives in the Amazon River. Do you guys know where the Amazon River is? The Amazon River is a long river that's in the, uh, well, in the Amazon, it's in South America. And he drives a mission boat. So this mission boat, he drives it up and down the river, it's a motor boat, and he brings missionaries and he brings nurses and doctors to different towns and different villages so that they can go and help others and um, they can do mission work there. Now this is a story of uh, Pastor Hallowell and his son, and his son is 15 years old. Now who's 15 years old? I don't know if we have a 15 year old here. But you guys will be 15 years old sometime. So his son and Pastor Hallowell. Now, one day, Hallowell and his son were on their mission boat, and they were driving up the river. Now the river has a strong current, so a motorboat can go up it pretty fine, and it just drives through, car up the river. Now, as they were driving up the river, they saw three men who were in a canoe, and they were waving them down, saying, hey, can we get a ride? Because they, in their canoe, trying to paddle their canoe up the river, they can't paddle um, because of the strong current that was going down. And so they said, hey, can you pass a line to us? Can we ride with you so that we don't have to go up this river? Now, in this part of the Amazon, it's kind of strange for people to ask for help because you have people who could be very dangerous, who can be, uh, who could steal your ship, steal your boat, or they can go and try to rob you and things like that. Now, Pastor Hallowell was thinking, maybe we shouldn't go, but something impressed in him we should probably, uh, we should let them on board so that we could help them. And so that's what they did. Him and his son, they passed him a rope and they were able to bring them in onto the boat. And so the three men were there with them. And so they went and they began to go up the river, continue to drive up. Now, suddenly, the current started to pick up even stronger. And then all of a sudden, one of the men knocked all the way and the steering wheel and began to turn the boat around and so the boat moved back and forth and the other two men grabbed the sun and the sun was almost actually about to fall off and grabbed them put them on pastor Hallowell was thinking these men are going to rob us <laughs> these men are going to go and take this boat but on realizing that the man he turned the boat to the side and then began to steer the boat, moving forward still. The pastor, um, getting up and checking his surroundings, saw that the men weren't attacking his son. They were just putting him back down. And he looked onto the side of the river, and he hadn't seen it, but there were a lot of jagged rocks that were up on the middle of the river that he was driving through. And he noticed that the part that he, they were going through was dangerous, dangerous, uh, a dangerous path to go on. Had he not seen that, the boat would have collapsed. They would have hit the rocks, and they would have all sank and drowned. So he realized that, and he said to the men, oh, thank you so much. If, if I didn't see that, we, our lives could have been really in a bad spot. And even the son, he was almost thrown off because of the boat, but they were able to catch him. And so they go through the river, and the man who um, took over the wheel, he just ended up going and steering them clear of all of the danger that was on the river. Now after that, the pastor and the son, um, they, they got through those uh, rapids and those um, dangerous spots in the river. The men th then suddenly said, okay, 
thank you. That's all that we needed to go. We could go and you could drop us off here. And so they took off their canoe, put it onto this, um, with this off the side of the boat, and they set off again. Now this was strange because Pastor Hallowell said, there's no villages nearby. I don't think there's any villages nearby. Why, why are they getting off? We could have just brought them out to the rest, um, to the nearest village. And as he was, as they set off, he went back and turned around and went back to the, uh, to the steering wheel to go and set off again. Then all of a sudden, his son, Dad, they disappeared. They did what? Dad, they disappeared. He looked out, out from the boat again, from his steering wheel, and he saw there was no canoe. There was no three men where they just set off. There were no ripples in, the, in this part of the river, and there was no bend, there was, no, there was nothing to s show that they were hiding. They this is a true story that was told by one of the pastors. Um, Pastor Hallowell says that these were angels that he met on the Amazon that saved their lives that day. And it is an amazing story to think that God has um, watches over each and every one of us and that when we do his work he's able to take care of us so i want you guys to remember that story and as we continue to do god's work and as we continue to live for god he will always send help for us when we need him okay that's my story for today who would like to pray Dear Father, thank you for this day. I pray so that we could um, thank God for watching over us and sending his angels to do his work. I also pray so that we could listen to the pastor's story today and um, have in mind that God is always over us and he, he will always do good things for us. We can pray, amen. Ellen White, commenting on the Beatitudes, wrote, He who has given his life to God in ministry to his children is linked with him who has all the resources of the universe at his command. The Lord will not fail him in the hour of suffering and need. The story of Heinrich John Stilling, a German ophthalmologist, inspires believers to trust in God completely. He wanted to serve others and prayed that God would lead him into a service profession. He was convicted to start medical school. However, he needed a thousand, which he only had $46. A neighbor heard of Stilling's plans and offered to give him a ride to Strasbourg, where the medical school was situated. The divine providence was repeated time and time again. For instance, Stilling ran into a merchant in Frankfurt when money was almost gone. This merchant gave him $33. Once in Strasbourg, with his rent and tuition due, Stilling found himself again penniless. His landlord, st instead of asking for the rent, gave him $40. His entire career was a series of minor mir miracles. Stilling thanked God by becoming a benefactor. He performed eye surgeries and restored the sight of many, even those who could not afford surgery. Stilling is an example of stewardship. Paul suggested that believers should imitate God's life of generosity. God loved and gave himself as a ransom to many. May we also choose to give of what the Lord has given us. May generosity be the real trademark of every believer. Let's pray. Our God in heaven, we rejoice today and we are exceedingly glad for you have made this beautiful day for us where we can rest, we can fellowship with our brothers and sisters and to worship you. Lord, thank you for the talents and blessings you've given us. 
As we give today, help us to reach into our pockets and give generously to our church to help to support the needs of our church, our local ministries, and also to fund all aspects of your ministries. Lord, please accept our tithes and offerings and bless it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today is found in Matthew 5, verse 8. It says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Uh, it's time for our uh, prayer. And for those of you who have uh, personal prayer requests, can you raise your hand? Okay, let's kneel down for prayer. Our most gracious, loving Father in heaven, creator of heaven and earth, our redeemer, our friend. Lord, we, we humbly come before your throne at this very moment kneeling before you just to give you praise and thanks. Especially, we would like to worship you. Lord, we thank you for life and strength that you've given to us. You are the sustainer, the giver of our life. And we give you all the thanks, honor, and glory for you alone are worthy. Lord, look at your people at this very moment, not only on this house of worship, but through, uh, throughout the entire universe that you created. A lot of people worshiping you because you are such a God, an amazing God that we are longing for to see. Lord, at this time, Sometimes we fail you, sometimes we commit sin, but here we are, Lord, we're bringing our hearts to you at this time. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, make us worthy to worship you, and to be on your presence at this very moment. Lord, as your people, we are in need, we are in need. We would like to be with you in heaven one day. But as we think of that, uh, of that day, Lord, continue to give us faith, to give us strength, to endure all the things that we experience here on earth. Lord, sometimes we out of focus. There's a lot of destruction 
There's a lot of sideways. But Lord, thank you for your faithfulness because you always guide us to be on the path that you would want us to be. Lord, thank you for my brothers and sisters who are here right now, worshiping you, kneeling before you, just to give you praise and thanks. And also, we would like to give you all our burdens, our shortcomings. Lord, some of us are sick physically. May we cannot mention each name, but you know each and every one who needs healing right now. So for those of you who are sick, be still. Have your faith. Because we have a wonderful God who are so faithful to give us healing. For those of you who seek financially, emotionally, and most especially spiritually, continue to walk on because Lord is a merciful God. Continue to the love that you found to be more faithful and have a personal, closer encounter with our love and Savior. Lord, thank you for this moment. We would like to dedicate our time hearing your word as our pastor general give the message. May it become alive. May all of us will experience the experience of heaven one day when we come to worship you. Lord, change our heart, not like where we come in, but change our heart when we go out, and may we reflect your character to other people that we mingle each and every day, so we become an ambassador of your light, of your glory, for those who are in darkness, that may come and experience also and wonder what God they have in their lives so they will become interested. Lord, thank you for hearing and answering all this prayer because we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Father in heaven, today we lift up to you your servant, Pastor Ed. Pastor, we ask that you would be with him as he takes the bread of life today. Father, but most especially, I pray that you will be with him and his family as they travel to go to California this coming um, week. Father, may you be with him and his family. Send your uh, travel of mercy and your holy angels to be with them. Give them the protection. And Father, we would like to uh, congrat congratulate him for the well done job. So Father, we are, um, we pray Father that you will continue to uh, give him the talent and the Holy Spirit as he continue to uh, spread the words for your glory. We ask this, O Lord, through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The prayer, Lillian. Appreciate that. We're, my family and I will be leaving for, we'll be taking a trip to California uh, this Monday. Um, it will be a graduation trip slash um, my dad's welcome party by all his childhood friends <laughs> and uh, co-workers way back in the Philippines. And so uh, they are excited. They are looking forward to having him. They're probably more excited to having him than me, so <laughs> which is fine, you know. Um, that's great. That uh, and also, of course, I'm also very excited that for the first time in my life, I get to graduate with a picture of my dad and mom with me. First time. So uh, uh, as I keep telling, uh, Jonel uh, probably remember uh, memorized this already. Uh, not in elementary, not in high school, not in college, not even in marriage, in wedding. When we were in Hawaii, my wife uh, and I were married in Hawaii, and uh, they couldn't be there. And so all I did was like, <laughs> um, God is good. Amen. All the time, all the time. So uh, thank you. And by the way, uh, another thing that this graduation really means so much to me is that is because it's not just one of those, um, I just did all the homework and all the, uh, the, the, the uh, academic stuff, and then I finished. But actually, you, are, you, you as a fam church family, you have been a part of this thing, of this journey. So um, this is not a solo work. Uh, this is really a community work, and I praise God for all his, all his grace and mercy and patience and let me also say this. Thank you so much, church family, um, for being a part of this wonderful journey that God has given me. So let's, let's, um, let's pray together before we, uh, before we begin. Loving Father, thank you so much for being such a good, good father to all of us. And today we... We thank you that we can once again worship you by opening your words and uh, by letting you speak to us through your words, through your spirit, who is our teacher. Uh, hide me, Father, and um, may your words find its lodging, its place down deep in our heart and in our minds. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So. How many of you, how many of you drink, maybe you've drunk from the past, maybe you're, you still drink in the future, so I don't keep drinking. How many of you drink bottled water? Okay, yeah, yeah. I used to do it a lot too, and uh, um, we, uh, by the way, did you know that bottled water? Bottling water for drinking is a billion-dollar business in the world today. Did you know that? In fact, one source that I quote, what I checked, it says $100 billion. That's a staggering amount of money, huh? Just, just for the water that was supposed to be free for all of us to drink. And now, 
I mean, company after company, they are just pocketing all the bucks. Billion dollar. But one of the selling points, one of the selling points that uh, this business, this industry has been really using is the idea of drinking clean and pure water. In fact, this one, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, I think, uh, let me see if I, there you go. Have you seen any of this? And this one too, purified water. All right? The idea of drinking clean and purified water is selling billions of dollars worth of drinking water. It's no wonder they use, <laughs> they use those words, pure, clean, purified and when people see that, it's, oh, oh, I like that. I'll buy that. All right? um, the fact is, we all want to drink clean and pure water. Isn't that right? I mean, how many of you doesn't want that? We all want purified, clean drinking water. In fact, I know some of you who drive to this place. <laughs> all right? Somewhere in Linwood, right? Yeah. Uh, the Artesian Well. All right, I've talked to some of you who have been doing this. Just check with Rene because he is the, he is the master of this now, right, Ren? Uh, I'm even getting the blessings and some of us as well. Um, and and we, we want clear, purified drinking water. Any of you have a water purifier at home? Yeah. Don't raise your hands. Otherwise, I'll know which homes to go to and uh, maybe get some purified water. But, yeah, so we, we all want clean, purified, pure water. The business world, by the way, is capitalizing on this idea of having pure and clean products. By the way, aside from the pure and purified water, do you know what else they have with pure or clean or purified? Mr. Clean. I remember from my childhood, that man, in, even in the Philippines, okay? Mr. Clean. Not only that, we also have what? Pure foods. <laughs> all right, they just use all these words, pure, clean, purified. And not only that, even, even supplements, you know? They you just use highly purified, and every, everybody's buying it off the shelves, taking them, all right? Not only that, what else? How about this? Any of you use this? Yeah, air purifier. So it's not just water. It's air purifier, air pure foods, clean foods, clean air. Every, by the way, we praise God. We live in, in a place like Washington. It's called Evergreen. Never mind lots of rains because that's, by the way, that's part of God purifying our air here in Washington. So praise God for that, you know. Pure air. Anything that can be labeled pure. <laughs> the business world will, will try to sell them, all right. So many people are interested in all kinds of pure and clean products. Except one. Open your Bible now with me to the gospel according to Matthew, verse 5. We are still here in this uh, uh, journey that we began <laughs> a few months ago. We are still here in Matthew chapter 5, all right? We're in the Beatitudes, right? The Blessed Life series. Today, part 7. That's where we are right now, so open your Bibles there. I want you to track this with me. Chapter 5, verse 8. Thank you. Was that Alexis who helped us read this a while ago? And so I want us to read this together out loud off the screen. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Once more. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Before the modern business 
world cast in on the idea of pure products or clean products. Jesus talked about having a pure heart. All right? He talked about it, by the way, as one of the characteristics or character traits of his followers, of people who are a part of his kingdom here on earth as well as in heaven one day. All right? Jesus said, you want to be a follower of mine, this character trait will be seen in your life, in your heart, in your lifestyle. Some of you are say, really, Pastor Ed? Pure right now? What, what does Jesus really mean? What did Jesus mean when he said, when he said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God? Because, and I know, I hope you are following this. This could also mean those who are impure in heart will not see God. Are you following that? And so some people might think, oh man, ha, wha, tough luck for me. You mean I need to be sinless? Well, praise God, the answer is no. <laughs> All right, so <sighs> relax right now, okay? Because Jesus did not mean pure in heart. Jesus did not mean you got to be sinless right now to have a pure heart. No, no, no. And so we praise God for that. So what did Jesus actually mean for a person to have a pure in heart. What does pure, what does the word pure really mean? The English word pure comes from this word in Greek. Kataros. Kataros. Now, there is an English, English word that you might be familiar with that comes from this Greek word. Catharsis. Familiar with that? Have you seen that before? All right, cathartic experience, like a, a purifying, a healing experience, all right, when, uh, that, that you may have, that someone may have because of what they went through, all right? And so this, I'm going to share with you two basic meaning of the word pure that Jesus said we need to have if we are a part, if we're going to be a part of his kingdom. Two basic meaning. And here is number one. The first basic meaning of this word is this. Of the meaning, uh, the meaning of the word pure. What is the word? Purified. All right. Jesus said, blessed are those who are purified. In essence, what Jesus is saying is, blessed are those whose heart have been purified. All right. Blessed are you if your heart has been purified. Because you know what? Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and wicked our heart is impure our natural I, I'm, by the way when I say heart Jesus is not referring to the physical heart all right he is talking about the seat of the will the, the character the, 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 the intuition the conscience everything in the mind that has to do with how we form our character all right and so that's the heart the emotion not, it's not just talking about the emotion of a person so blessed are those whose heart has been purified. So the pure in heart are those who come to Jesus in recognition of their sins. Jesus, I come to you because I know I have an impure heart. I thought about this. I, I, I said about this. Wrong words, wrong motives. I have all this sinful... By the way, do you remember Jesus said, out of the abundance of the... Oh, well, not, that's in, in Proverbs. But Jesus also said, out of the heart comes what? All kinds of evil stuff. All right? But, of course, the gospel also talks about out of a good heart comes good stuff as well. All right? So it just depends on what kind of heart do we have. Okay? Jesus said, blessed are those whose heart has been purified. People who have come to Jesus and have received forgiveness from Jesus, they have pure hearts. They have purified hearts because they let Jesus and His blood wash their hearts, wash them clean through the power of the blood of the Lamb. Can you say amen? And is any of us exempted of that here? Any sinless person here today? No, all of us, all of us 
need that purification, that cleansing. In fact, you, you know this verse. I don't even have to post this here. I too. Yeah. Uh, look at this. 1 John 1, 9. R read this with me, please. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And how many of you here need purification from Jesus today? Oh, every day. We all need the blood of the, of the Lamb of Jesus Christ to purify us from all our sins. No one is exempted. No one. In fact, King Solomon uh, asked this rhetorical question in Proverbs 20, verse 9. Look at what he, what he said. Who can say, I have kept my heart pure? Who can say, I am clean and without sin? And you know what the answer is? No, there's no one. In fact, Paul is the one who actually answers that. All, how many? Yes. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You, me, all of us here, everyone outside this building need the purifying, cleansing blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Yes. Yep. And the only way, according to Jesus, the only way for us to see God by faith right now, with the eyes of faith, and later on with our literal physical eyes in heaven, is for us to have that experience of the purif purifying, powerful blood of Jesus Christ. So if anyone here is thinking, man, I'll just come to church. I'll just attend church. If anyone here is thinking, I just have to do so much good stuff. I just have to be helpful to my neighbors. And then God will take me to heaven. No, no, no. Only through the blood of the Lamb will we be able to experience seeing God here by faith right now and then later on in heaven with our literal eyes. Are you following me? Absolutely. So, Jesus, His precious blood. He, here's the second meaning of the word pure. So, the first part is what? Everybody, purification, all right, purifying, purified heart. Here's the second one. When blessed are those, are the pure in heart, he means blessed are those whose heart is, we, has unmixed or undiluted devotion to God. Uh, what he's saying is that uh, the Bible also talks about uh, double-minded things who are unstable. What Jesus is saying here is that those who are pure in heart are single-minded in their goal, in their devotion to God. In fact, in fact, uh, let me see. Um, okay, those who are, are pure in heart, they have singleness of heart. And not only that, the pure in heart are those whose single-minded goal is to what, everybody? <laughs> to please and glorify God. H have you... Um, it, it's hard. It's hard to have uh, two masters, Jesus said. You will love one and hate the other. You can't serve. And by the way... Um, Brother Mario Betita, uh, he, he knows this. We prayed for him about it. Um, when, 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 Grimar, when you were having double vision, it was hard for him. He was talking to me about even just going the stairs. It could be your life. All right? It, in spiritual terms and life, it's the same thing. Can you imagine having two Different spiritual goals. No wonder the Bible says those who are double-minded are unstable. Jesus is saying we are to have a single heart purpose in pleasing and glorifying God. Instead of uh, like, okay, uh, it's Sabbath. So, uh, Lord, <laughs> I want to be as pure, as single-hearted to you d during this day. Oh, it's sunset already. Ah, I can do whatever I want now during the week. Is that how we're supposed to have a pure heart? No. The kind of devotion, the kind of sincerity, the kind of 
purity, the kind of experience we have to have in Sabbath, are supposed to last not just 24 hours on Sabbath day on Saturday, but throughout the week. Can you say amen? amen. It's not one of those, I'm religious on Sabbath. And then I'm secular on, uh, on the rest of the week. No. We don't have two gods. We don't have two hearts. Jesus said, blessed. That no wonder, blessed are, Jesus said, blessed are those who are pure in heart. By the way, um, let me see if I have this here. Oh, well, this is from the uh, Seventh-day Adventist Bible commentary. Take a look at this. Those with pure hearts have what, everybody? have forsaken sin as a ruling principle in their life. And their lives are without reserve, consecrated to God. Only on Saturday? No, during the week, all throughout the week, we need to have the same kind of dead commitment to God, forsaking everything else, worshiping only Jesus, and also consecrating to God our lives throughout the week. Not just on the seventh day. So we are not just seventh day, really. We're seven days. Christians. All right? Jesus said, blessed are those. Blessed are the pure in heart. How many of you remember this gal? Her name? Sanya Richards Ross. Any of you? Um, all right. Well, in 2008... Sanya Richards Ross competed in the 400 meter in Beijing, China. She started the race strong and built a substantial lead before locking up on a home stretch. And by the way, she finished with the bronze during that time. However, four years later, she competed and won the gold medal in the 400 meter in London with a time of 49.55 seconds. For four years, Sanya Richards Ross waited. And for four years, she waited with the hunger pangs of unfinished business and the sense of an uncompleted mission. Four years, by the way, everybody, she devoted her entire life, her strength, every part of her life to preparing and doing everything she could do in that goal. When they introduced her, of course, before the 400 meters in London, she blew a kiss to the camera. I don't know if some of you remember this. Uh, went out and got the gold medal she had worked tirelessly for, for since Beijing. Let me share this. Just as Sanya Richard Ross was completely devoted to her pursuit of Olympic gold, Christ's followers, you and I, are single-minded, are to be single-minded and completely devoted to Jesus and His mission of saving the lost. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. Am I single-minded enough? Am I pure-hearted, just like Jesus wants me to be? No wonder. Psalm 51, 10, this, uh, what the psalmist wrote. Would you read this aloud with me? Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. It's something that we can manufacture on our own. By the way, have you noticed that? This heart is not something, I gotta have this heart. I'm gonna do everything. No. You ask God to give you that heart. Create in me. Can you create? No, we can't. But God can. And so, in answer to our prayers, God can give us a clean and pure heart and a steadfast spirit, just like the psalmist prayed for the very thing. Do I have a pure heart from sin? Do I have a steadfast or undivided devotion to Jesus? Also, I want to share with you that aside from the fact that the Bible teaches us that God creates a pure heart in us, we are to cooperate with him because some, some people say, oh, Pastor Ed, so that means, oh, God, give me a pure heart, and that's all I have. And then I'll just go veg out, uh, you know, do nothing and stuff like that. 
No, no, no. The Bible says we have a part. We have a part. All right? In fact, in fact uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Take a look. Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us, what everybody? Purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Do we have a work? Do we have a part? Absolutely. Now, this is not to say that, you know, we can save ourselves. No, that's not what we're saying here. Only Jesus is our Savior. Amen? But as He is working in us, we have a part to do in the process as well. As we continue to cooperate with Him in His work with us. So how do we actually do that? How do we purify ourselves according to the Scriptures, according to the Bible? In fact, the, psalm, the psalmist uh, answered this in 119. How do we purify ourselves? Psalm 119, verse 9. How can a young person, by the way, that's not just referring to the, to the young people, to the youth. That's referring to the young at heart. <laughs> to, to all of us. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to what, everybody? By, re, by living according to your word. To the Bible. We've talked about it in our Sabbath school lesson this morning. All right? How important the Word of God is in our lives as Christians. And so, here is the first practical thing that we can do. How can we purify ourselves by reading and applying God's Word? Have you heard this before? Oh, yeah. But let me just say something to you, to all of us this morning. Instead of just reading the scriptures, reading the Bible, I want us to let the Bible read us. Are you following? Instead of just studying the Bible, I want, the, I want us to let the Bible study us. I'm not here. I'm not, I'm not sensing that uh, I'm being followed. Instead, how many of you mark your Bibles? Instead of just marking our Bibles, we need to let the Bible mark us. Ah, uh, <laughs> light is turning on. All right? Instead of just turning the page of the Bible, we need to let the Bible turn the pages of our lives and draw us completely devoted to Jesus Christ. Amen. Instead, here's the last one. I hope you get this one. Instead of always looking for the best Bible translation, we need to let the Bible make us the best living translation of all that people can read. Amen. Living translation. Your life. My life. Do you, do, do you believe that the Bible can do that? <laughs> Absolutely. We, I think we, we uh, used that word a while ago. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. 12. Read it, let's read this together out loud. For the word of God is what everybody alive. is alive and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the what everybody? Of your heart and my heart. Hallelujah. The Word of God is alive. The Word of God is active. It's not just like the rest of the books we read in school. All right? This book is alive and powerful. It can change our lives if we let it. All right? First practical thing we can do to purify, to have a pure heart. Stay close with the Word. I, I guess the question is, how regular are we 
in devoting time and in spending time with God's Word. I'm not just talking about, oh, I got to read the Bible, I got to teach the lesson, or I got to go to a Bible study, or I got to go to a small group, and that's it. No, no, no. We need the Bible to saturate our lives so much that we, when we go to our schools, when we go to our church, when we go see our friends, when we go to our workplaces, we are, can I say this? We are oozing out the, the word of God because we have been marinated. Uh, do you know the word marinate? We marinate fish, we marinate whatever. How about this? How about us, our lives being marinated with the word of God? So that when we talk to people, all they can sense, all they can see, all they can hear, all they can taste, if they could, in our words that we talk to them, in our lifestyle, is that, oh man, I know there's something about that person. Because we have a pure heart. And because we see Jesus, we see God, they will see Jesus through us as well. Praise God for that. Blessed are those. Blessed are the pure in heart. Not only that, 2 Timothy chapter 2, here's the second one. Flee. What's that a word for flee, everybody? Is that flee like, okay, I'm going. Is that flee? No, I said, let's go, let's go. Run as fast as you can. Flee, run from the evil desires of youth and pursue what, everybody? Righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of what kind of a heart, everybody? Out of a pure heart. And so here's the second thing that we can do. How do I have a pure heart? By running away from evil desires. Anyone here ever experienced having an evil desires? I don't have to, I didn't even have to ask. I just look at you, you just look at me. <laughs> We're all human beings, right? Sometimes it just comes to our mind. But just because a tempting thought lands in our mind does not mean we have sin. No. Well, if we welcome it, yeah, that becomes sin. And Jesus was tempted too, right? But he did not sin. All right? It's okay to be tempted. But you don't have to welcome that tempting thought, that desire that we have. We don't have to accept that. We can run. We can flee from the evil desires of our hearts. And so, here's the third one. James 1.27, religion that God, fought, God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after our orphans and wi widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being what, everybody? being polluted by the world. So I, I, I hope that you are getting the sense here that yes, God creates in us a pure heart, but that does not mean we'll just do nothing. No, we got our part to act. We have our part to do, all right? And so the third one, according to James, how can we have a pure heart? By serving people's needs and avoiding worldly, uh, that's not that, that's L. Worldly <laughs> moral pollution. Okay? And are there worldly moral pollutions all around us? Oh, yes. And for some of us, when we go to work, we see them all over the place. When we just go out, out there, they're all there. So let me, uh, let me share a concluding little story. I hope this is the clincher. Have you seen or do you know this little creature? <laughs> you got it. You got it, Pearl. It's uh, called ermine. It's one kind. Of, it's it's a form of it's it's a part of the this family of weasels. All right. It's so cute, right? 
I mean, <laughs> it looks really cute. Now, this, this creature, this uh, ermine with uh, brown fur, most, most of its body, did you know that it has a capability? It's, it's one of those defense mechanisms, protection for them, that in the wintertime, it becomes like this. during winter time to protect itself from predators yeah because if you're like this winter time uh oh tough luck but when you're like this oh man you can just hide all right now for hunters and by the way the that ermine that weasel would instinctively protect his white coat against anything that would soil it Absolutely, it would do anything. And for hunters to try to take advantage of this unusual trait, they, here's what they do. Uh, they actually don't set a snare to catch them. Instead, they would locate their homes, like, like this place where this uh, little creature is uh, coming out of right now. Uh, sometimes uh, cleft, uh, cl uh, just a cliff in the rock, all right? Um, and then what the hunters would do is that they would smear the entrance of their home with grime. Anything that would soil their white, pure fur. And then the hunters would set their dogs loose to chase the ermine. The frightened animal flees toward home but refuses to enter because of the grime or the filth that would soil their fur. And rather than soil his white coat, the ermine is trapped by the dogs and captured while preserving his purity. For the ermine, purity is more precious than life itself. Purity of heart ought to be as precious as that. By the way, I know of someone who is sort of like that. He is the ultimate pure person of all. And you know what? He wouldn't even preserve his life. He even laid down his life. Jesus gave up his life on Calvary because, listen everybody, because purity of purpose which was following his Father's will was more important to him than his life itself. He also gave up his life so that you and I can have a pure heart. All because of what he did. Here's my final question based on what we Jesus said blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God how many of you today would like to see God by faith now and with our own literal eyes later on in heaven how many of you would like to see God well you know what you need to do let's pray father God in heaven we pause for a moment to thank you for Jesus, the purest life, the purest heart, the purest person who ever lived this planet and yet gave up his life to remain single-hearted with the mission the Father gave him. And that is to save us. And in saving us on that cross at Calvary, he also became the one who, can, who alone can grant us, cre can create in us a pure heart so that we too can see you. Both now by our eyes of faith and later on in heaven with our own naked eyes. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. for closing song. 
Uh, we're going to sing the first, the second, and the last stanza. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move up the impulse of Thy love, up the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and. person with that kind of pure heart father because we want to continue to see you with our with the eyes of our faith we also want to be ready when you reveal yourself so we can see you in your glorious appearing with our naked eyes thank you so much for that privilege and so as we close May we live this week with a pure heart so we can see what you're doing in our lives and other people's lives. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Short announcement, Auntie Nova wants to meet with the Vacation Bible School during lunchtime.